I wanted to create a line chart where I show the series names, not in a legend, but place them at the end of each line, because I think it makes the line chart a little bit easier to read. Now, I thought this would be easy. However, it took me on quite a long journey where I had to write a few DAX measures, use calculation groups, and try the charticulator. Now, let's see what the option is that I finally went for. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. In this channel, I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look at the problem of today, which is how can we place a text label at the end of each line? To start off, I already created a line chart that shows the summer sales by month for our different products. Now I also already added data labels, but I only want to show the very last one and actually, I don't want to show the value, but the name of the series. Now for this, we first need to create a measure that figures out, okay, what is the last date that we have in our sales data set? Now, once we have that, then we can figure out, okay, what the last data point is for each line. And only when it's the last data point, then show our tax label. Now let's start off with the last date measure. So I go here to my sales table, add a new measure, and let's call this one last date. Now for this function, we need the calculate function because we want to look inside of the date column in our sales table, but we want to remove any filter that we have on our date table. Okay, so let's start with calculate. Then the expression, here we can use max. And now we want to look inside of the date column in the sales table. Now here I call it month because we just have one date for each month, always the first date of the month. All right, so then the second argument, there we can remove the filter from the date table. So here we can use all, remove filters or all selected if we want to keep filters from other visuals. Now, so let's go for all selected and then we remove the filters from the date table. Now to test our measure, let's add it to a normal table first. I see it always returns me the 1st of December, 2020. Now this is indeed the last date that we have for each product category. Okay, now instead of the 1st of December, it's a little bit better if we return maybe the 31st of December. So let's go back to our measure and use the end of month function for month. And then over here, we just type in zero for the months that we want to go forward or backwards, so now that we take the same month. Okay, so now that we have a measure that returns the last day that we have in our sales table, we can write a second measure. And there we can check if the last date in the filter context is equal to that last date and only then return the sales. So for example, if we are in January, the last date over there in that filter context is the 31st of January, it's not equal to the 31st of December. So therefore we don't want to show anything. Only when we are here in December, then we want to return total sales. So let's write this measure and let's call the measure label last data point. Now here we can start off with a variable for the last date. Let's call it date last equals our last date measure. Then we have a second variable for the last date inside of the filter context, which we can call date max or date selected and we can return this with a max function. And here, inside of the max function, we can put the date column from the date table. And then let's first return the date selected. Now you see when we add it to our table that the date selected is only equal to the last date, here for December. Now, we just need to wrap this inside of an if statement to say if the two are equal, only then return total sales. So let's go back to our measure and have a third variable, which is going to be the result. And this is going to be equal to if we want to check if date last is equal to date selected. And if it is, then we want to have total sales. And then we want to return the result. You see, now we have only a value for December. Then we can go back to a line chart. And here I want to add label last data point to values. But the problem is, you can only have one measure on values when you also use a field on the legend. So that's not possible. What I could do is take product out, 
put the label for the last data point in. And then you see it adds there that data point with a label for our new measure. Now this approach is kind of limiting in two ways. First of all, I cannot have anything on the legend. Second of all, if I now return not a value but a text, let's see what happens. I'm going to replace total sales with some text, let's say label. You see, it disappears. It doesn't work anymore. It only works with values. And that's the tricky part of the whole challenge here. Okay, so our first approach is not ideal, doesn't get us to the end result that we're looking for. So what other options do we have? Now, then I looked into calculation groups. Now with calculation groups and calculation items, we can do extra calculations on top of existing measures. Now that is not so interesting for this problem. However, it also allows us to add format expressions. So we can say, if we have the last data point, only then we want to show a value or a text value, okay? So with calculation groups, we might be able to get there. Now let's see. Now, first of all, you need to have Tabular Editor installed. So if not, then just go to tabulaeditor.com, download it there. Also with the free version, you can do this. All right, so then the second thing is that we can copy the formula that we already wrote and now open up Tabular Editor. Then here we have all of the tables in our data model and we can now add a calculation group, right click, create new calculation group. And let's call this one labels. And inside of that calculation group, which is basically just a table with a column, let's also rename the column to labels. Then here we can add calculated items. Now let's have for the first calculated item, the values and the series name. Okay, so let's call it like that, values and series name. Then first of all, we need to say what the expression is. Now here we don't want to do any calculation on top of the existing measures. We just want to take the value that gets returned by the measure. So we can use a function that's called selected measure. And then for the formatting string expression, that is where it gets interesting because here we can now paste in the measure that we wrote before without the name of the measure. And the only thing that we have to change here is what we want to return. So instead of label, we can also return something different. So we can say, for example, we want to have the max bracket open. And here from the sales table, we can take the product and just drag it inside of a max function. Let's close the max, max function. And let's see if this works. I'm going to save my changes and return to Power BI. Now then we need to click on refresh now inside of Power BI. And after you refresh, you see that here on the right hand side, we have a new table for the calculation group, labels. And there we have our uh, column, labels, and we can drag that column onto the filter for this visual. Now from here, we can apply a calculation item and you see that the labels change in the visual. We have now for the last data point, the series name, and for all of the others, we have the value. Now you also see that for the last data point, there's no value. However, we could also add that inside of a formatting expression. Okay, but what if we don't want to show any of these values, but just the series name at the end of our line? Well, then we just have to update our calculation item. Okay, so let's go back to Tabular Editor. Let's duplicate the calculation item that we already created before. And this is going to be only the series name. So let's update the name, series name only. And the only thing that we want to dif do different here is the format string expression. So instead of having here only max sales product, we can add something for the else statement. So here we can do a quotation mark, space, quotation mark, and now click on save. We have now a new calculation item, which means we have to refresh inside of Power BI Desktop. And then here we can switch inside of the filter section to our new calculation item. So that's going to be the series name. You see, all of the values disappear. We only have the label for with the series name at the end of our lines. However, where's the y-axis? The y-axis disappeared. And this is where it gets a little bit weird because the y-axis only shows when you have a value label for the very first data point, which is over here, January for audio. So it looks at what is your first series, audio alphabetically that's audio and then the very date first data point that we have here is for january 
Okay, now to show you this, let me go back to the calculation item. Okay, so inside of the format string expression, we can just update over here that else statement with another if, where we can just return a value for that very first data point. So if dim, oh, sorry, max dim date month is equal to or different from January, or the product, so max dim. And here we can also just take it from the left hand side and just drag it inside of a max function. Maybe a bit easier here. It's different from uh, audio. That's the first one. Then you want to show nothing. So quotation mark, space, quotation mark. And then close the if function. Oh, I forgot a closing bracket here. So let's put the closing bracket in, save it. Turn. Now you see we have only a label there for the ver very first data point and the y-axis shows again. However, what if it would not be for audio but for television? Let's have a look. So over here, TV. So now we have only a value label for the very first data point for TV, but the y-axis disappeared. So it seems to me that there needs to be a value label for the very first data point in your visual, and only then the y-axis shows. So calculation groups only get you that far. So if you do want to show the values, then there's not really a problem. The only downside I think is that those labels that we have at the end of the lines, we cannot place them on the right hand side, okay? And with the next approach, you can, okay? So let's have a look at the last approach that I took, which is using the Charticulator visual. So I'm going to insert a new page and over here, make sure that you add the Charticulator visual. So go to get more visuals, look for the Charticulator and add it. Okay, and then it pops up over here. Now, also important to know is that the Charticulator visual doesn't work when you have calculation groups. Okay, so I have to delete what I created before. So here, this labels table, I have to delete that one so that we get rid of the calculation group. Now all of the other visuals, and they will break of course. And once that one is done, is, is gone, now we can insert the articulator and let's put the width to 900 and the height to 600. Now let's add the fields that we are going to use for this visual to the data field. Okay, so we are going to use the month. So let's put that one onto data, quarter and the year I don't need. And then I want to use total sales as well and I want to create a breakdown by product. Okay, so these three fields. Now we can go here to the header of the visual and click on edit. Create chart. And to create as much working space, let's hide over here the filter panel, maybe also the visualization and the fields pane. And we have to start building our visual, which starts off, first of all, with some data points. So here I go to symbol and drag symbol here onto the cliff. On our axis, we need total sales. That's going to be the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we need the month. Okay, now we want to connect the data points. So I go to links, product, create links. Now we want to have different colors for our lines. So we have to go here to layers and click on the link layer and to have a different color for each product. Here is color, we just drag product onto color. All right, then here we can also make the lines a little bit wider and let's do the same for the markers. So I go here to symbol, for the fill color, we take the product, drag it on there. And maybe you also want to have a stroke. Let's put it to white. And this gives us the base visual. All right, now we want to add labels to it. So we can go here to the ribbon, add some text and say that it needs to be anchored to those circles. Okay, then we want to place it on top. So let's zoom in and just drag it up. Okay, now what do we want to show on our text fields? We want to show, let's say the total sales. So let's just drag total sales here under attributes onto text. Okay, so now that we have this, let's see what happens if we click on save. Now you see this gives us the basic structure for our chart, but we have to update the label so that we only have a label for the last data point. So let's go back to the header, click on edit. And this we can achieve by 
using a measure. Okay, now the measure is almost there. We have already here the label for the last data point. We just have to update it a little bit. So let's go back. And instead of just returning here the label, we can first of all say max, and then again, return the product. Okay, so let's close the brackets. Now this is going to return over here, label for the very last data point. Now then for the else statement, we can also return something. So here, it is important that you also return text then, so the form which the format function does. So format, and we want to return total sales. And the format, well, here we can define our formatting state. Now, for example, 0, 0. And let's say we want to show it a thousand. So I'm going to put a comma right in front and close the format function. Now, instead of having total sales onto our text field, I'm going to change that. So let's select the layer text one. Here on text, I'm going to use label last data point. But it doesn't show up in the fields yet. So I have to add it to the data panel. So let's add it there first. As soon as you do that, pops up, uh, pops up also here in the fields. Now we can use that for our text layer. So let's select the text one and drag label last data point onto text. Now you see we have values everywhere. And at the end of our line, we have the label. Now, what if you only want to have the label? We just have to update our measure and say that we don't want to show anything. You see here, we don't have the problem with the y-axis and we have more flexibility in where the labels uh, show. So for example, I can go here to the text layer and then scroll down to the alignment. And I want to show it on the right hand side. Just a bit counterintuitive here. You have to say uh, left alignment in the middle and then increase the margin, okay? Then if you also want to have different colors, then you can go here to style and drag product onto color. Now click on save, go back to your report. There we have our line chart with a Y axis and the series name at the end of the last data point. So quite a lot of effort to get to this result. And of course, I also would hope that this gets easier going forward. However, for now, this is a workaround. Maybe you know a different workaround to get to a similar result, then let me know in the comment section below. And if you got some value out of this video, consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next video.